Guess we got to talk about SmackDown here, or SummerSlam. What the fuck was the name of this show? Breaking Point. Boiling Point. Boiling Point. They should have one called Boiling Point, where everybody has to wrestle over a vat of boiling water on a scaffold. Sure. That's better than my idea of a ring surrounded by fire-themed pay-per-view. I got ideas, everybody. Believe me. All right, let's talk about this show here from Montreal. We had Jericho and the big show against Henry and MVP. I gave it two and a half stars. I know I talked about this with Dave, but I am a huge fan of Big Show and Mark Henry grappling together. Now, don't get me wrong, they suck together. But I am wildly entertained by Mark Henry displaying his amazing strength on the Big Show. Yeah. Dave mentioned Brock Lesnar throwing guys around and throwing around Big Show, but I'm more impressed by Mark Henry because Mark Henry does it in a slow, methodical manner. You know, Brock threw him up in the air and lifted him real fast. Brock was more a... a uh, he came across as like a, a power lifter, whereas, whereas uh, you know, Cho is an old-school strong man. Henry, you mean? Henry. The guy who's really strong, anyway. He actually is a strong man. So... <laughs> Anyway, he threw him. He caught him on a stinger splash and and uh, caught him in midair. That was something else. And 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 held him there. Yeah, you know? that, that was the key thing here. He did not just, you know, he basically held him in an elevated bear hug and held show off the ground. Yeah, you know? this is like all legs and lower back. So Henry finally tossed him, and as the uh, ref was checking on Jericho, show punched him in the face. And yes, Mark Henry was pinned after the knockout punch. So they're putting that punch over as something that no man can possibly escape or kick out of. And better than your average draw match. I gave it two and a half stars. I love that finish because it's been the same thing lately where someone is in the ring doing spots with Jericho. And then they end up by the ropes or through the ropes. And Big Show from the apron or from the floor punches them and they are pinned. Yeah. And then Jericho pins them. And there is no bickering on the team. There is no Big Show saying, hey, you stole my pin. And Jericho doesn't say, hey, I get to do my move. No. They are a team, and they have decided that an effective move is Big Show's punch, and an effective way to set that up is to have Chris Jericho distract the other guy by wrestling him, and then Big Show can catch them by surprise, and punch them, and Jericho pins them, and they both win, and they're both happy. And that makes me happy. Kofi and Miz, U.S. title. It was a three-star match. The highlight, by far, was Miz doing a double sledge off the top rope, which was the most dramatic thing you've ever seen. It was so dramatic, they did a replay. I think I think Kofi maybe was supposed to kick him or something, or get his boot up, or do something as he was coming off, because the match fell apart for like 30 seconds after this double sledge. But anyway, it was a bunch of roll-ups, and then Kofi hit the wacky kick for the pin, it was a pretty good match. There's a point where they were trying to get the boo yay thing going. With, they were both throwing side kicks. And I kept thinking, you know, you can block those. You can put your hand down there and block those kicks and you'll be just fine. But they didn't. There was a point where Kofi went for what they're now calling the boom drop, which is that double leg drop thing he does. And he went for this move. And Miz got the knees up. And Kofi landed on his back. That was also awesome. And then they traded near falls and Kofi hit his kick and won. So I, I, I'm with three and a quarter. So, wow. Yeah. Both, both of you so far, I mean, quarter star higher than you. Oh, wow. I oh, know. Important. Legacy and DX submissions count anywhere. Here, I will not be higher than you. Well, that's for sure. DiBiase ended up putting Sean in the Million Dollar Dream as Cody had him in a figure four around the ring post. And Hunter had been beat up backstage, hit with a, I believe it was like an ice ice box or something like that. Uh, cooler. Anyway, he uh, didn't make it out in time, so Sean submitted. And good finish to put the young guys over. It went too damn long. I gave it two and three-quarter stars. I know you did not. I think you were way too hard on this match. But what the hell can you do? They were doing crowd brawling. Crowd brawling almost always sucks. This is no exception. And then Sean and Cody fought up a stairway. And then Sean went flying over the railing onto what was clearly a pillow. A great big soft cushy pillow. The only thing missing was Sean screaming, Wee! as he went down. Or feathers flying up as he landed. <laughs> feathers flying off. Or, yeah, just something wacky like that. Maybe just, just confetti flying into the air. But then Cody and Ted took Hunter backstage. I like feathers. That's fine. They beat Hunter up forever. There was food there for no reason. and they. That's right. They were backstage. And, like, DiBiase took a slam through a concession table. 
But they were like in the bowels of the building. <laughs> there's, there's a food there was setup, nothing around. Cover to the table and nothing else within 50 yards of this building or this I've, table. I've actually snuck backstage at, at WWE show and I've been to catering and I I've hear eaten, it's very nice. I've eaten with the guys and this was not catering. No, this was just for some reason there was a table way the fuck out in the back of the building with hot dogs on it. I don't know why, <laughs> but it made a a big racket when it was destroyed. So, by now, they had thrown Sean off a railing, and they had finally, after a long two-on-one battle, they had finally overwhelmed Triple H and laid him out. And I thought, okay, make him submit now. And they left. They just walked away. I was like, what are you doing? Isn't the whole point of this? To incapacitate both men? I can't make an unconscious man tap out. Sure you could. How? He's <laughs> unconscious. He, could, he was knocked out cold. It's, it, has to be a, it has to be a tap out. Well, I think that's stupid, but fine. So then they went to wrestle Sean, and that, again, took 10 to 15 minutes of my time. And they just wrestled and wrestled, wrestled, wrestled and wrestled and wrestled, and I kept thinking, it's submission only. Just grab, like, a pair of pliers, start tearing off fingernails, tear out some teeth, he'll submit quickly. But they didn't, and then finally they won. This went forever, and it bored me badly. It was too long. Star rating? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I went, at the time, three-quarter star. I hope you've upgraded since then. I have no desire to go back and watch it again. You really still think it was not even an average match? No. An average match at least would have been over in five to six minutes. This wasted 20 minutes plus of my life. It's the average is not about time. I, I This got to a certain point. In fact, it got to the point where Sean went onto the pillow. And at that point, I started to hate it, and then the star rating dropped... By the minute. Would you rather he fell on cement and was incapacitated or killed? I'd rather they just found some other way to lay him out that didn't insult my intelligence. Hmm. So, yes, and then, as I noted, if, with every passing minute, I thought this got I got more and more angry with this. Horn did a promo, and uh, I don't know. As I, as I look back on what he said, and I think back to his delivery, I mean, he really tried. And it wasn't it was... bad, but it was... It just... It didn't do it for me. That's my, it. My, my exact words were, I have no idea what the point of this was, but it definitely failed. Damn. So, I guess that about says it. Thumbs down for this promo. Kane and Kali, Singapore Kane match. Speaking of thumbs down. Minus one star. Yes. Maybe more, I don't know. It was really <laughs> fucking bad. And ended up with Kane going after Ron Jin, and Kali came to uh, make the save or whatever. And... Uh, Set up for the choke slam. This was when Ron Jin ran in. And anyway, the point is, Kane pinned him with a choke slam, and one, two, three. Didn't expect that. Uh, for those um, spoiler alert, I want to fast forward a couple of moments here. But at SmackDown, they did do an injury angle with the Great Kali. He is apparently leaving, either for the time being or permanently. So uh, that explains this finish right here. But it sucked. It sucks. This was a very, very bad match. I like the point where uh, Kane put Kali in a submission hold that kind of involved putting a Singapore Kane behind Kali's head and then sort of putting his arm on it the way the arm was meant to bend and then holding him there. And this is supposed to hurt him somehow. I don't know. But fans were openly booing. Fans were chanting boring. There's nothing redeeming about this. This is probably the low point of their feud to think about that. And at least it's over. We had Punk doing an interview. And said nobody given a chance against the spooky Undertaker. <laughs> spooky Undertaker. Nobody gave him a chance at SummerSlam. He proved him wrong. Said he'd gotten rid of Jeff for good. And then three weeks later, Jeff went and did what Punk said he'd been doing for months. Said, quote, you'll never see my mugshot posted all over the internet. You'll never read about me all over the headlines, unlike Jeff. Wow. Said he lived a clean lifestyle, and when you did that, good things happen to you. And anyway, the lights went out, and Punk freaked out, but it was Jimmy Wang Yang ribbing him. And then Punk beat the shit out of him and said he was not worried about The Undertaker. The Undertaker should be worried about me, he said. He, he was mentioning French Canadians. He talked about how they polluted their body with alcohol and cigarettes. He should have added poutine. He also polluted their body with that. And then Jimmy Wang Yang did a light switch trick, and Punk beat the hell out of him. And I thought, well, good. You did ruin his promo here in the live pay-per-view. You deserve this beating. He should have talked about 222s. He should have. Coding is legal in Canada. What does that tell you? Christian and Regal for the ECW title. Three and a quarter stars. This was the best match on the show up to this point. The only problem was the crowd just 
was not into it. I mean, technically, it was a great match. I didn't like the half Nelson German dropping poor Christian onto his head. But uh, Regal worked him over. It was great. Christian made a comeback. It was great. Unfortunately, Regal lost. That was not great. <laughs> that sucked. What the hell can you do? Regal at one point had the crowd... I, I realize it's only the ECW title, but he still had the crowd thinking he was going to win the championship with a rolling cent on. Hmm. <laughs> that, that, that right there is a sign they were doing something right. And by the way, on ECW, Zack Ryder is the number one contender. What? I, I, that's what I hear. What? They did that just, what has happened with this? Just to annoy you. This is like the stupidest thing I can even think of. It's not even Zack Ryder. It's the fact that Regal isn't champion and apparently is not going to be anytime soon. Why? I guess they don't have any faith in him. I don't know. And they have faith in Zack Ryder <laughs> as the number one contender? I guess that's what must be the case. Oh, my God. That got me sweating. Then we had the Pat Patterson deal where Dolph came out and buried him and eventually kicked him in the gut, and Morrison made the save. The point is, this whole thing just failed. Yes. It was like, you know, the people were respectful of Pat Patterson, but they didn't care. And they hated Ziggler, but not so much because it was the go-away heat. Yeah. It was like, this is going on too fucking long. Get it over with and get the fuck off my screen. Mm -hmm. And then Morrison made the save for a guy nobody cared about, running off a guy that people didn't want to see anymore. So it just was, uh, it died. Dolph actually asked at one point, how can we be wasting valuable pay-per-view time on this? Yeah. And it was a fine question. And the crowd was mostly kind of bored, and eventually they started going, what, to entertain themselves, and I did not blame them. This failed in every way. Orton and Cena, I quit. Four and a quarter stars. This match was awesome. One of my favorite matches of the year, actually, as far as just like, it was just, Two guys who went out with, like, the simplest match imaginable. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was so simple, and the story was just all about how they worked this simple match. It was Orton beat him up, got some handcuffs, handcuffed Cena to a bunch of things and beat the shit out of him, and then Cena finally made a comeback, handcuffed them together so Orton couldn't get away, and then he put him in a hold, and Orton waited for just a moment, because his title was on the line, and then was like, get me the fuck out of here, and tapped out. <laughs> this whole thing was a work of art. This was pro wrestling as art. Yes. Some people will hate that term and, and think I'm a fool, but this match was professional wrestling as art. It was awesome. It was like, this will be one of the best matches of Cena's career. I'm trying to think of, of when Cena is going to have a better match. I'm not thinking it's going to be anytime soon. I'm not thinking it's going to be Hell in the Cell. Orton was like, God bless Brian Danielson. But on this day, Randy Orton was the best wrestler in the whole entire world. He got so much out of everything. Yeah. Out of almost nothing. He was a perfect professional wrestler. He was a perfect heel. John Cena was a perfect babyface. This was like... I want this match on DVD. I can't even remember the last match I've said that about from WWE. I want this I want this on DVD before I even want to see Undertaker and Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam. Am I wrong? Is there something wrong with me for saying that? Yes, because Undertaker didn't wrestle Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam. Or, I'm sorry, at WrestleMania, whatever. Uh, the, the Undertaker uh, Michaels That one match. match that everyone knows. That one yes. match everybody knows. I would watch this one again first. That's how much I, I thought... Well... I can't give it five stars. I think if you watched them both, you would change your mind. This was fucking great. I don't know. This was... This was sports entertainment with an emphasis on the entertainment, and usually when I say that, it means hijinks, shenanigans, goofing around. This was tremendous, tremendous drama. See, here's the difference. Michaels and Undertaker was like an awesome match. It was a great, fantastic, one of the best matches in many, many years. But a lot of it was just built around being great workers and knowing the perfect time to do finishers, kick out of finishers, and and uh, and crossing up normal spots and that sort of thing. Which, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Believe me, I gave it four and three-quarter stars. Many people gave it five. But this match, this was not a five-star match. But as far as, like, this was the best match I have seen in I don't know how long when it comes to telling a story during a match. When people tell, talk about 
This match told a story. This fucking match told a story. I can't even think of the last match that told a story as well as this match did. This was awesome. Orton worked Cena over when once he got the heat, and there was hatred and 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 <laughs> hatred in Randy Orton's eyes, and he despised this man he was beating up. And Cena would not quit, and he was resilient, and he was taking everything. And they actually said Cena was being literally tortured, which bothered me because he could have escaped this at any time by just saying, I quit. Real torture, you say I quit, and they keep going. But anyway. But they they, they, they had all this emotion, and then Cena finally escaped, and he cuffed himself to Orton. And there was a pause as it let it all sink in. that They were now handcuffed together. And then Orton, on his back on his ass, tried to run away backwards, terrified, panicked, and Cena Cena stared down Orton, and when they talk about babyface fire, Cena's expression right there, that is babyface fire. He says, you have an ass whooping coming to you, young man, and I am just the man to give it out. And he did. And then they did the really awesome finish with the super STF, with the handcuff assisted, pulling the arm across the chin. This was outstanding theater. And then we had Punk and Undertaker. God bless him. Star and three quarter. I thought uh, it was one of the. It, well, I just. I didn't even know how to rate it. I didn't yeah, even have a rating until uh, I was about to publish this thing, and I knew people would get on me for not having a rating. So there you go. Star and three quarter. If you don't like it, fuck off. So anyway, it just. There wasn't much to it. It was. It, it was, was eight brief. minutes mm-hmm. with a with a finish out of nowhere, and then Teddy Long came out and said the Goga Plata has been uh, has been banned. And by the way, nobody emailed about uh, Undertaker using the Goga Plata after Vicky had uh, banned it. And I know he did. I just can't remember when, so I was looking for some help. Probably a mania. I was, uh, no one helped me, so what the hell can you do? That's right, he did try it at WrestleMania. Anyway, so, uh, and Sean escaped. He got the ropes. So anyway, I'm looking, actually I'm looking for instances where he won using it after it was supposedly banned. But anyway, Teddy came out and said it had been banned, so the match he was... He beat Edge with it at Mania the year before. <laughs> That was before the banning, if I recall correctly. Could be. I don't remember. It was definitely before the banning. Because the hold hadn't even been over, and then he, he got it, and I think she banned it after that. But Actually, you may be right there. Because remember, it was like he, he finally got it over, and then yeah. it was banned? It was like a year-long struggle to get this thing over, and by the time he used it to win the main event of WrestleMania, it was way over. And I, I remember thinking, you're the man. Yeah. And, and then they must have banned it. So. He actually put it on funny here, and I thought he was going to do a straight arm bar. But instead, he did his Goga plot. Anyway, Punk tapped immediately, and Teddy restarted the match, and... They did the Montreal finish, as everybody is well aware. And uh, as noted on Sunday, the best line of all was uh, when they showed several replays of Undertaker not tapping out. And Jim Ross calmly said, that was a judgment call at best. (laughs) I laughed so hard. (laughs) He gives the referee a lot of benefit of the doubt. And then he was yelled at on headsets, I guess, or I don't know what happened. But I know that all of a sudden he was explaining in uh, great, great detail that Undertaker had absolutely, positively, without question, not submitted. So uh, there you go. That was uh, the pay-per-view. Yeah, the match, all anyone's going to remember is the cornball finish and the Montreal rehash, and some people were amused. I, I did not see this coming. I felt like a fool for not seeing this coming. Some people were really angry. They brought it up again. But the action that we saw for the seven or eight minutes they were out there was really, really good. They worked well together. They were working hard. Undertaker took a suplex, or excuse me, a superplex from CM Punk in this here match. They had a brawl that was, <laughs> as strange as this may sound, was one of the best, best brawls I ever saw because... They were throwing punches and kicks, and they would throw them with every muscle in their body from the ankles up, and then they would sell with every muscle in their body from the ankles up. The Undertaker would punch Punk, and Punk's knees would wobble, and his arms would wave back and forth, and then he would punch Taker, and Taker would do the same thing, and it ruled. And then the, the, the circus started. So, yeah, I don't know how to rate it either. I really enjoyed it. Um, all anyone's going to remember is the finish. So I guess it doesn't matter how good the match was. You really enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're the one. That's fine.